What's going on guys, this is Jake and in this video I'm going to show you how you can set up a Shopify buy now button that's going to look like this right here that you can insert into any of your websites so you don't just have to set this up for a Shopify store but you can also embed this buy now button into another site say maybe on WordPress, Wix, Squarespace or Webflow whatever website creator you're using you're going to be able to embed this buy now button into it and whenever someone clicks on buy now it's going to open up a pop-up here where somebody can check out and buy this product here through your Shopify store checkout. So I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up in this video. Before we get into the video, if you're looking to run pre-orders in your Shopify store, check out the Easy Pre-Order app by clicking the first link in the description. Pre-orders are a great way to lock in additional revenue for your store that you otherwise may not have been able to capture. By taking pre-orders, you can continue selling your products when they are out of stock, allowing customers to buy them with the expectation of receiving the product at a future date once you restock. Or you can also pre-sell products that haven't even been released yet. Say if you're launching a new product next month, you could start accepting pre-orders now for that product to lock in that revenue and sales ahead of time. Pre-orders are a staple in the e-commerce industry and Easy Pre-Order is the simplest way to set up and manage pre-orders on Shopify. So check out Easy Pre-Order by clicking the link in the description and start recapturing lost revenue by offering pre-orders now. All right, guys. So in order to get started, we're going to need to add the buy button channel to our store here. So you just need to open up the app store, which you can do by opening up apps and opening up the app store right here and we need to add search for buy button in the app store and then we'll see the buy button channel show up right here so we need to add this to our store really quickly so now that we've added this to our store it's going to show up here under our sales channels from now on so we have the online store and the buy button so now we just need to create a buy button right here so there's two different options here we can either create a buy button that is to one product or a buy button that is showing an entire collection so in this case we're going to create one just for one product for this example so i'm going to open this up right here and then it's going to allow us to choose one of the products in our store to create the buy button for so in this case i will just do it for this skincare bundle right here and we'll click next so now we'll see the default look of the buy button right here and this is where we can edit it so before we actually edit it, you can see that this is what it's going to look like on desktop. And then this is what it's going to look like here on mobile. So you want to make sure that you take a look at what your changes are going to look like on both. So the first thing we can do is take a look at our layout style. So right now we have classic. If we take a look at basic, we can see that it's just going to be a button by itself. And then we have full view, which is going to be the standard full product view here inside of Shopify. Depending on where you're actually inserting this button, it's going to depend on which view you want to actually use. Full view is probably going to be a little less common just because this is pretty much like a Shopify product page here. So you're probably going to be using basic and classic. So basic might be used, let's say, like in a blog post, for example and the blog post has to do with this particular product and maybe you just want to have a quick button in here that lets someone check out immediately this is where that would be useful right there but classic is probably going to be the most common one so we're going to move forward with this example right here then we have the action that people take when they click so we have add product to cart or we can do direct to checkout so we can make it buy now instead or we can have open product details so we can essentially either have this link to our product page on our Shopify store. We can have this add a product to cart or we can go directly to checkout. So if you are embedding this button on another site that's outside of your Shopify store, then you're probably going to want to use direct to checkout. If this button is going somewhere in your Shopify store, then you can either use direct to checkout or add product to cart or open product details. But if this is going on another site outside of Shopify, I would recommend using the direct to checkout option right here. So we're gonna use that for this example. And then we can take a look at this button style. So we can open this up and we can take a look at the button right here. So we can edit the corners. So if I were to drag this up, we can see that it makes the button more rounded. Then we can change the button width by making it larger or smaller here. So you can customize this to make it look however you want. And then we have our colors down here so we can open this up and we can make the 
button match our branding. So in this case, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take this hex code here from our branding that we're using for the buttons on this store right now. And I'm going to put that in here and make that match our branding right here. Now, even if you are embedding this on a site outside of your store, it's still good to have it match your branding because it's going to be good for brand congruency. So then we can edit the button text as well. So typically this is just going to be white or black. In this case, I'm going to keep it as white and then we can edit our typography here. So we can make this font match whatever it is that our branding is currently using. So this is going to come down to preference right here. Let's say I just pick a different font and we can change the font size by adjusting this right here. So let's say I make the button a little bit bigger. And once we are done customizing it here, we can take a look at what it looks like on mobile once again, just to be sure. And then we can back out here from button style and we can customize the layout next. So we open up layout and we can see that right here we have the image size is small. We can make this medium or large if we want to, depending on how big we want it to display. And we could also show additional product images if we want. I only have one product image for this particular product though. In this case, I'm gonna keep the image size at small. We can change the alignment from left, right to center. And this is going to change the alignment as you can see of the text and the button here. And then we can actually change the buy now button text, but right now we'll just keep it here as buy now. And then we can choose to show the quantity field. So this will allow potential buyers to buy more than one of this product. So if this is a product that customers would typically buy in bulk, then you probably want to show this quantity field. In this case, because it's a bundle, I won't show the quantity field, but if it's something that people are typically buying more than one of, then you would definitely want to show that here. Then we have the product title and the price, and this is essentially just going to be the color. So in this case, I'm gonna just make this text black because I think it looks better and that matches with the branding that I have on the store here, black and blue. And then we have the typography once again of the title and the price, which I would recommend making it match the same font that you use for the button, just so that way everything looks very congruent here. So we've been using Montserrat, so we're gonna use that for everything right here. And of course we can change the size of these different things right in here as well. So once we're done with the layout, we can go back here. Once we go down here, we can see that we have some shopping cart options. So if I were to change this button real quick to add product to cart, then we could edit what our shopping cart looks like. So we can see that we have the cart show up right here and we can see that the heading is cart and then we can edit the subtotal text right here. We can choose whether or not we want to show a specific order field note here. So this is just pretty much editing our cart text like we normally would inside of a Shopify store. We can edit the background and the body text here, which I would make look black because I think that looks a little bit better. So in this case for this product, I'm not actually going to be using the add product to cart. I'm going to use the direct to checkout. But if you are using the add to cart, this is how you can edit that. And if we change this to open product details here, we can then edit the detailed pop-up. So we can see that if we click on open product details, this is what it's going to show. So we have a image of the product here where we can scroll through the different images. We have the title, the text, and the add to cart button right here. So we can change things like the background, the product title, text once again, the price and the description. I would just change these all to black. And then we could change the fonts once again, which we would do just like we did before. So editing this is just the same as the other things that we edited here. So it's the same exact process. So it's going to depend on which action you choose when people click, which is going to alter how many of these things you have to edit. So direct to checkout, like I said, is going to be the most common, but you can choose to use these other ones as well. So I'm going to stick with direct to checkout and I'm going to open up the advanced settings here and then we can choose our checkout behavior and there's going to be two options. So we can have it open a pop-up window or redirect in the same tab. So we can see buyers will either see a separate checkout window from your website or buyers will see the checkout in the same window as your website. So in this case, I'm going to stick with the pop-up window because I think that looks a little bit better for this particular scenario. Then we're going to go back. And then I'm gonna click on next. So now we can see that we are given the embed code for our buy button here. 
So we can see it's showing us a couple of default options where we can get our buy button to put it on WordPress, we can put it on Squarespace and Wix, but we can really put this code on any platform where we can insert code into the site. So I'm gonna copy this code here and I'm gonna insert it just into the Shopify store because that's going to be easier for the sake of this example. So I'm going to add a page and just call it buy now button. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to show HTML here and I'm going to paste this code in here and click save. Then if we view this page now, we can see that the buy button is now showing up right here and inserting it into any of these other sites would be the exact same process. You just have to copy and paste the code in and this is what it's going to look like. So with that said, that's how you can set up a Shopify buy now button on any of your websites. So if you did find this video helpful, be sure to leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel for more videos, and I'll see you guys in another one.